Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in the course. Today we are going to start a new topic where we are going to discuss about the various platforms that we use for remote sensing observations. Remote sensing basically needs some sensor to collect the energy from our target. So, in order to carry those sensors, we need certain platforms and the characteristics of those platforms will affect the way we do remote sensing. So, that is what we are going to discuss in starting from today and in the next few lectures. There are plenty of platforms available for performing remote sensing and in the earliest lectures I told you uh, there is like no defined distance between the target and the sensor at which we call the observation as remote. Like we can even like do some sort of like measurement standing on the ground, but even if we still do it without in contact with the land surface or whatever the target we need, we call it as, we can call it as remote sensing, technically speaking. So, the platforms which we do to collect data or the platforms which we use to collect data can be classified into several kinds like ground based or in situ platforms, aerial platforms or low altitude which is just fly and short distance up, up in the sky or space borne platforms like a few examples given in this particular slide. Here you can see like ranging there is like a very uh, large range in the distance uh, from the target say if this is like the target the sensor can be placed anywhere in the distance ranging from 1 meter to say it depends on the height at which we place the platform. So, these are all basically the towers and handle sensors are basically in situ platforms or ground based platforms. Then we can have these categories UAV stellar balloons so they are like uh, low flying platforms they are like airborne but still they fly pretty close to the ground. Then we have this aircraft which fly, which can fly at a slightly higher altitude in the range of few kilometers. Then we have satellite in the between the altitude range of uh, 200 kilometers up to say now even we have like a most often we use 36,000 kilometer as earth observation target, but we can place satellites at a very far distance also like low earth orbit satellites and then geostationary satellites low orbit satellite typically in the range of 200 kilometers to 2000 kilometers we can say. And then we have this geostationary satellites orbiting around 36,000 kilometers away from the earth. So, this slide basically tells us uh, the distance from the target at which we collect the data can vary very widely and each of its platform has its own application in remote sensing. So, that is what we are going to discuss. So, the first category of platform that we are going to discuss is the ground based platform or in situ observations. Ground based platforms in general means whatever sensor we carry, we keep it close to the ground. For example, here in this particular slide, we have like a person collecting data above the field like this is like a handled instrument uh, what the scientist is using there. So, this handled instrument is called like spectroradiometer which is useful to collect spectral reflectance curve of the land surface objects. So, this is basically the sensor it has like a computer, it has like a computer here, it has like a backpack here which contains the actual control unit and everything. So, this is kind of like it will observe earth uh, or whatever the target source within like a small solid angle similar to how like a satellite based sensor observes. And this we can use it as some kind of like reference for our various applications. So, this is an example for a hand held uh, sensor. So, the sensor is held in human hand. Similarly, we can mount some sensors in trucks. Say these are like some example, they are like plenty of sensors fixed within those boxes. They are mounted to trucks and they are used to collect data. They also like certain like a small solid angle on the earth surface collect the reflected energy or the emitted energy from the earth surface. Similarly, we can place such sensors mounted on towers, it is also possible. Say we can keep, let us say we have a tower like structure here, we can keep the sensor mounted on this tower. It can be a kind of like a semi permanent installation, it can be there for few months or few years or it can be there permanently. So, in situ sensors actually can vary 
or it can come in different different form not in-situ sensors the platforms uh, it can be carried human itself is a platform if like in the scientist given in this particular slide carries a sensor in her own hand so it's like a uh, the human being herself like she is acting as kind of like a platform similarly we can like use trucks as platforms we can use towers as platform and so on so again another example is given in this particular slide so here we have like two persons who de they develop something kind of like a movable uh, or movable uh, truck kind of thing which is like it can move basically which has like a array of sensors you can see here it has a thermal infrared radiometers it has a spectrometer NDVA sensor web camera GPS receiver weather monitoring sensors and all those things so they use this for kind of like an integrated agricultural applications so these are all like different ways in which we can collect data standing on the ground itself this is also like example for remote sensing like technically speaking uh, like we are not in contact with the earth surface from which we are collecting the data we are having the sensor at certain distance and still the working principle of those sensors like the say here we are showing a thermal infrared radiometer this sensor still works in a remote way like it, it just observes the emission from the ground surface remotely uh, whatever is coming within the solid angle and we can use it to estimate the land surface temperature. So all these kind of uh, platforms which we use for collecting data standing on the ground we call it as uh, ground based platforms. Okay, why do we need a ground based platform in the first place? So the ground based platform is essentially necessary for several things. One is calibration and validation of data from other sources like uh, when I discussed about uh, radiometric properties of optical sensors I told like uh, we need to do what is known as like radiometric calibration that is relationship between uh, the DN recorded in the sensor with the actual radiance that is coming in from the ground right. So for those sort of calibration exercises we need reference data which has to be collected from the ground because when we collect data close standing close to the ground we are effectively uh, removing the effect of atmosphere right so that is one way like if it, the effect of atmosphere will still be there at least for the few meters but it is it will be much less when we compare it with the orbital height of a satellite similarly for validation purposes say some variable we might have calculated from satellite based data we may need to validate it for such activities ground based observations are mandatory like for almost all satellite missions people will do a calibration and validation exercises where uh, they will collect ground data at the same time of like satellite overpass or aerial flying whatever so that the ground based observation can always be checked against uh, or it can be used for validating the uh, satellite based or aircraft based observations that is one thing. Ground based observations can also be used for proof of concept testing of new sensors like whenever a new kind of sensor for remote sensing is proposed it won't be directly put into a satellite and sent to orbit. First such sensors will be tested using such ground based platforms such as like a truck mounted say for example here you can see in this particular slide we have this particular mount inside the truck has several sensors. It has like an S band radiometer, like a passive microwave radiometer, L band passive microwave radiometer, a hyperspectral spectral radiometer, a thermal infrared probe, a C band radiometer, and so on. So, basically, if some new kind of like sensor, if it has to be tested from first, they will test it using such sort of like ground measurements. Then it will move to aerial platform, then only it will be, uh, it will be sent to space in a satellite. So, for testing some sensors, ground based platforms will be useful if someone designs okay this is like a new way of data collection it will give us like a complementary data for what we are doing means first people will mount it on such in situ platforms either on a tower or on a truck they will collect data from the ground they will try to analyze it in conjunction with other variables say crop variables or land surface variables then they will understand okay this data uh, or this new sensor is pretty much useful in a particular manner so for that sort of proof of concept testing in situ observations will be useful and then remote sensing data analysis like uh, in the previous slide I showed you like a scientist collecting 
data using a handheld spectral radiometer. So that is kind of that particular sensor will give us a spectral reflectance curve. So that kind of that spectral reflectance curve we can use it as a reference and we can match our satellite observed spectral reflectance curve and say okay uh, this particular pixel in a satellite uh, gives a spectral reflectance curve similar to vegetation. So the pixel there may contain vegetation for this sort of like image analysis to, to understand what is contained in an image the reference data can be useful and for collecting such reference data a ground based platforms can be used. So as I said before the ground based platforms can be collected in many different ways. But ground based platforms comes with its own limitations they are like it needs extreme or careful planning uh, like what to collect, when to collect, how to collect like I am talking about data, what data to collect, uh, in which mode we have to collect all this kind of planning should go on. It is laborious, we need people physically visiting the field to collect the data. It is cost intensive like it needs lot of money to conduct like ground campaigns, it is not like an easy task to conduct ground based campaigns, it involves lot of money actually. So it is expensive, it is laborious, lot of people should spend enormous amount of time in the field preparing the field, preparing the ground based sensors, going to field, travel involved, uh, data collection, all those after like uh, post data collection it is processing, all those things takes enormous amount of time. Actually in order to overcome the disadvantages of the in situ observations, remote sensing has gained so much attention. Like we cannot do in situ observations all across the globe. It is next to impossible I will say if not like perfectly impossible um, because we observe like uh, hundreds if not thousands of variables related to this earth system and if you want to monitor everything sitting from the ground it is going to be uh, extremely difficult if not impossible. We cannot conduct ground based campaigns for everything but without ground based observations also remote sensing from space does not exist like does not exist means it will not be of much use. We need always some sort of ground based data collection to advance or to support remote sensing activities from space. So in situ observations are in indeed needed without that remote sensing is not going to be as effective here remote sensing I mean remote sensing from space it is not going to be as effective but at the same time in situ observations alone cannot help us to collect various data we need over uh, different places across the globe. Okay, now we move on to discussing about the low altitude aerial platforms. So what are low altitude aerial platforms? They are those platforms which will carry the sensor to like a small amount of height say hundreds of meters or less than a kilometer basically from the earth surface or most at most can be uh, tens of kilometers at most I will say. So these kind of aerial platforms in the olden days people were using balloons like hot air balloons or motorized balloons called blimps or even like in very olden days people were using like even very large kites to carry like photo cameras. They will like fly it in space and <coughs> observe various parts on earth or even pigeons. Like uh, as given in this particular slide here, here it can see like a PGN attached with some sort of like camera fitted to its body. Since PGN has like a very good direction capacity uh, we can ask it to go to one particular place and come back it can go if the photograph can be taken automatically by the camera then the PGN has to just fly and come back. So we can like take the photographs and use it for reconnaissance purposes. So mostly this kind of aerial platforms developed in olden days. Uh, for mainly for military applications basically <coughs> especially they grew or they got so much attention during like world war even before the invent of aircraft like world war one where the aircraft technology was still at its nascent stage they were useful even before world war people were using this sort of like uh, reconnaissance mechanisms. So they were like uh, used in much olden days. Now in recent decades like last one decade or so unmanned aerial vehicles has gained tremendous attention and uh, that particular field has grown leaps and bounds. So UAVs or in short can come in many different forms a few examples are given in this particular slide you can see like 
uh, UAVs comes in different different forms, they comes with different capabilities and so on. So these sort of UAVs can fly even very close to the earth surface or in altitude of like few tens of kilometers. Uh, like some military grade uh, autonomous UAVs can fly at a very high altitude uh, for reconnaissance purposes. So these UAVs can carry multiple sensors, they can fly whenever we want etc. So this kind of uh, UAVs have also gained lot of attention and in recent decades people are using it for anything like we might have even seen it in our friends or relatives wedding like even it is used for like starting from simple even photography to uh, various remote sensing applications we can use UAV and UAVs are kind of one of the most widely used low altitude aerial platforms. So again like uh, another example for a UAV sensor is given. Then comes aircraft. So aircraft essentially is uh, I would classify it as like a aerial platform which is capable of flying at certain amount of height like uh, easily it can fly above uh, UAVs or whatever like PGN skies, balloons etc. Aircrafts actually were like uh, after the development of this aircraft technology immediately it came to use for remote sensing observations especially in the uh, military especially for military needs during world war 2 and all like aircrafts are used extremely for military reconnaissance applications. So even from that day and even now aircraft plays a major role. Like just before a uh, few slides I told you that uh, whenever like a new sensor is going to be developed people will always conduct like a ground based platforms where during ground based platforms definitely aerial campaigns also will be there. Aerial campaigns means uh, like a prototype of a sensor which has to be sent to space will be mounted in an aircraft. It will be flown at different places across the globe and then people will all at the same time will collect ground based data. So the sensor characteristics will be studied in detail from the aircraft first before it is moved to like a satellite that is one thing. So aircraft is again like widely used even for uh, even before like a sensor is launched. We now just got briefly introduced to different kind of low altitude platforms starting from kites, PGNs, balloons, UAVs and aircrafts. So now it is time for the students to think, please pause the video for a second and then compare these different low aerial platforms and analyze it in terms of cost, spatial coverage, uh, what are its advantages platform stability, accuracy of output products, anything. So please pass this, think in detail about such aerial platforms and then you can re-watch the video for further discussions. Okay, now hope you all like had a chance to think about these platforms. We will discuss these platforms and compare them with each other. First of all, what are the advantages of these uh, aerial platforms, the major advantage of aerial platforms is we will be able to collect data whenever we need that is like a major thing. Uh, say for example, for satellite means we will not be sure whether the space bound satellite will be collecting data at a place at a given time. Satellites are defined by its own orbit which we will see later. We have to wait till a satellite comes to our place. Similarly, ground based platforms also means it may take us some time, we have to plan go to field say if you want to collect uh, data over like a big district uh, then ground data collection may take, may take weeks together. But aerial platforms they are relatively faster than ground based platforms so data collection can happen quickly in compared to in situ observations. We can collect data whenever we need like if I say okay there is like a flood in a given uh, state I can use airborne sensors to collect data over the field even if satellite is not there. If something happens during like night time when uh, satellites are not overhead immediately I can fly an aircraft if it is available uh, with government agencies. So all these if this any time operation is like the major advantage of aerial platforms. But if we compare the different kinds of aerial platforms what we can understand. The first thing is we will discuss in terms of like cost like the kites, balloons, PGNs they are like very rudimentary like olden days people are using. In fact balloons are still being used but still they are like 
uh, somewhat like relatively older technology. Cost wise, they are less expensive. Like here I am talking only about aerial platforms, okay. Uh, so kites, pigeons, balloons, UAVs and aircraft, three different uh, aerial platforms I am discussing. So the kites, balloons, they are like relatively low cost. If you have like a sensor, that will be like the major cost. The major cost will be towards the sensor. Uh, other things will be cheap. <coughs> also like uh, then if you come to UAV, slightly expensive. Say if you talk in Indian context, the UAV will be costing in terms of few lakhs, even like a basic model. Even when you use UAVs that are being used for like photography in weddings, they even cost like few lakh of rupees. And if you want like a real good survey grade UAVs, they cost few tens of lakhs. And really advanced UAVs, they may even cost in crores of rupees. So UAVs are expensive. Similarly, the sensors uh, that comes with UAV, they are again expensive. And also like nowadays, most of the UAVs comes bundled with its sensor. Like they are like different, different manufacturers for UAVs. They also develop their own sensors. And normally a sensor from one manufacturer may not sit in the UAV for sensor from another manufacturer. So that sort of interoperability is still not there. We have to, if we purchase like kind of, if we purchase a particular UAV, a particular brand, we may have to go to the sensors from that particular brand, from that particular brand actually. The interoperability of sensors is still not there. So it is kind of like expensive. Aircraft, further expensive, like uh, maintaining an aircraft, we may not do. We may have to hire an aircraft, the rent itself may be extremely costly and also we need extreme amount of training like even for UAV you need like a, a minimal training but for like piloting an aircraft, operating a sensor sitting with an aircraft they have lot of technical complexities. So each one is like uh, will be uh, going increase in a increased complexity starting from this uh, balloons to UAVs to aircraft cost will increase in that order similarly complexity also will increase in that particular order. Then we will talk about the spatial coverage of this. So normally the balloons, kites, etc. they are used to collect data over like a small region, maybe like a, a single village or so. Those platforms we cannot rely to collect data over a, like a large region. Even like two, three streets they may cover, that's it. Very small amount of area. UAVs we can use uh, maybe like a square uh, area in terms of like square kilometers we can use them. Some UAVs are capable of flying even for tens of kilometers, but whatever we have access to, like normally what we use for our typical day-to-day uh, -day applications uh, for remote sensing activities, they can fly for certain distances and maybe like a few square kilometers of area we can cover in one shot. Aircraft, they have a, like a really good spatial coverage. They can fly hundreds, even thousands of kilometers if properly planned. They can cover like a very large region in a short amount of time. So that is like the spatial coverage and also time wise aircraft can give you uh, really quick coverage over like a large area. Only thing is aircraft needs like a perfect uh, uh, or to say landing and takeoff facility whereas UAVs they may not need it. Some UAVs can take off and land from anywhere uh, only even if they need landing it may, it may not require as huge uh, runway typically required by an aircraft okay. So spatial coverage is uh, good in aircraft, uh, like extremely good in aircraft, good in UAVs and pretty much low in um, balloons or kites or some kind of thing. And anytime operation, any of the serial platform can be carried out for anytime operation. Then comes the important thing, the platform stability. So normally uh, balloons or UAVs, they are highly affected by wind or uh, other disturbing factors that may change the uh, platform stability and change its attitude. Say you are like flying a balloon with some sensors attached to it. If a sudden gust of wind blows, the balloon, the balloon may deviate from its path. Same, same thing may happen with the UAV also. If a UAV is flying, suddenly its uh, attitude may change. It may give like a small roll. It may pitch. It may, yeah, whatever can happen, change affecting the platform stability. Once the platform stability is affected, then the image we collected may not be as good enough. Uh, it may not satisfy the specifications that we need. That is one thing. But aircraft provides like a really stable platform. Among these things, aircraft is like the, uh, the best platform to achieve like stability because it can fly well over 
any sort of disturbances like uh, wind gust and everything. So typically it will be more stable when you compare with other things. Ultimately the platform stability will affect the accuracy of the output products. Say normally nowadays when we do air based or airborne data collection definitely we need the coordinates of the aircraft or the platform to be collected uh, every day like uh, normally people who are used to UAV technologies will, under, will uh, know this uh, almost all the survey grade UAVs comes with a GPS receiver it will be collecting uh, data from GPS satellites continuously that is to improve the accuracy uh, unless we know the position of the aircraft it will be impossible for us to geo reference the image same thing same thing applies with uh, aircraft and also to satellites we need to know the its position perfectly so that one like the position of the aircraft plus the attitude of the aircraft uh, like whether it is like perfectly straight or if it is like tilted some direction all the, we call it as attitude so that attitude of the platform plus its position will ultimately determine the uh, final accuracy of our remote sensing product the geometric accuracy I am talking about say if you are collecting data over like a particular region your image should perfectly tell the coordinate should perfectly point it to that region okay so that is what uh, we call it as like geometric accuracy the image should not be distorted if there is a circular feature on the ground it should appear like a circle in the image all these things relate to geometric accuracy concepts so uh, aircraft gives you like the highest uh, you can achieve like very high geometric accuracy even from UAVs if the operations are performed in an extremely careful and planned manner with lot of ground based GPS stations we can achieve very good accuracy but balloon such things we will always have to sacrifice accuracy to certain extent and uh, all these things whatever we have discussed are essentially the uh, comparison or like a brief discussion about the different platforms that we use for uh, different aerial platforms that we use for remote sensing observations. So as a summary in this class we just got introduced to what a platform is uh, like a platform is like a tool or a medium to carry a remote sensing sensor and platforms can be of many types ground based, air based and space based. So in this class we got introduced to ground based platforms and aerial platforms and we discussed different class of aerial platforms. With this we end this particular lecture, thank you very much.